All right, today we're gonna dive into ETH Classic and the Magneto update. I know we're probably talking something, maybe you don't know anything about it. Well, that's what this video is gonna be for. My name is Paul Barron, welcome back to TechPath. Let's dive into it. ETH Classic is a derivative of Ethereum, which is really the number two cryptocurrency that's traded on the open market out there. So if you are an investor in Ethereum, maybe this is something that you're looking into, or maybe you're looking at going into ETH Classic for the first time. Let's kind of jump into it here. Ethereum Classic ETC is a hard fork of Ethereum that launched in 2016. Its main function is a, basically a smart contract network and the ability to host and support decentralized dApps for its native token ETC, which is the token of Ethereum. So since its launch, Ethereum has also sought out different uh, to be differentiate from itself with the two networks technical roadmap diverging further and further from each other over time. So what's happened is that they continue to look at different strategies in which this particular scaling of Ethereum can be done. And Magneto is going to play a big part in this, much like ETH 2.0, which ETH 2.0, 2.0 from the DeFi space, once and if that occurs, and I believe it will, is that is going to essentially solve a lot of the problems and it would almost eliminate even the application in which Magneto and ETH Classic are kind of built into. But however, can they coexist? It's very possible that they can. I think a lot of people look at these technologies, look at these blockchains and say, yes, these can coexist. And it's definitely gonna be uh, the scenario. When you look back at what makes Ethereum Classic unique. Mainly it's aimed to preserve the blockchain as it originally was without artificially, um, you know, countering the, the DAO hack, which is essentially what Ethereum was done. So that's first, who the fir it was first people who disagreed with Ethereum response. They were kind of the legacy side of it, the old guard that really looked at this. And, and that's where kind of the split started to occur between Ethereum and Ethereum is a very important function in DeFi. When you look at Ethereum versus Ethereum Classic, it has no plans to convert a proof of stake mining algorithm while multiple developers continue to work on the future improvements uh, such as the scaling solution. So in English, what this simply means is that you have two schools of thought that are kind of running in the same herd here, being ETH and ETH Classic. And I want to jump to a couple of um, keys around this because this is important as you look at where it's trading. ETH Classic uh, trading right now at 46.10, uh, trade the chain. You can kind of see the negative uh, sentiment that is starting to float on ETC over the last seven day. This is not necessarily a good sign, especially with Magneto just a few days around the corner here. The question will be, does it pull out and is Magneto going to be the key element to kind of get ETH Classic, at least in a scenario for a short-term hold. I don't necessarily think that ETC is a long-term hold. However, there are those around the industry and around the investment communities that actually like this in a big way. And I wanna show you some of them and kind of jump to uh, really some of the key points about this and where the value of where ETH Classic could be. This is a piece right here. Um, Ether's plan, Donald McIntyre had set, asserted basically the continued benefit from the volatility of ETH and BTC Bitcoin markets. According to him, the price of Bitcoin will hit close to 125,000 by the end of the cycle. We're talking about the uh, bull run of 2021, if you're watching this in the future. So hopefully that's 125. And we see a lot of people talking the 140 to 160 range. We've had that on the channel before. But at the end of this cycle, ETC's value uh, could be 5% of Bitcoin's valuation. This would place the basically ETH Classic between 900 and thousand dollars. So this trading at 400, or excuse me, this trading at currently at $46. This is one of those projects that could be a huge gainer for and by the end of the year based on the bull run. So a lot of people have looked to Bitcoin as carrying a lot of these altcoins along for the ride as this goes up. So I think that's going to be uh, interesting to see. So I want to jump to, um, so as you can kind of see here, there's just the variance of, of where this is going, but I want to jump to some of the, the key elements around uh, ETH Classic. And I want to jump to this story right here because there's some interesting things here by Barry Silbert. Uh, basically, that's Digital Currency Group's CEO. His perspective on Ethereum and also 
in their EtherScan investment. Now, this all plays into ETH Classic, and I'll get there. So just follow me along for a second. Uh, DCG, basically, uh, probably the most important company in the Bitcoin ecosystem right now. They've made over 70 investments in digital currency, blockchain space so far, 25 different countries around the world. This is a real company. I mean, this is one, well, you know, they're the... Uh, they're, they're the main player here. I mean, when you look at where DCG is going, very, very influential. When you look at see what they're doing in terms of Ethereum-related startups, Etherscan, which is an Ethereum block explorer, that's going to be a big one. They already are showing support because of these kinds of investments. In addition to their interest in Ethereum blockchain, they've also uh, invested in RSK Labs. Uh, which is basically the team behind Rootstock, which often referred to as basically the side chain for Bitcoin. What they've done here, though, is Barry Silbert is also notorious for making bullish tweets regarding ETC, ETH Classic, which is basically the underlying token, back to what I was talking about earlier, of Ethereum Classic on the Ethereum Classic platform. ETH Classic is the original Ethereum blockchain that did not implement, implement any of the hard forking bailout uh, of the DAO. So that is, when I, when I look at companies and organizations like DCG making these kind of moves, in other words, support moves, other than I'm putting my money where my mouth is, I'm also investing in companies that are moving in this direction that would circle around what the technology of the blockchain for e Classic will be doing. And for that reason, I think this has a lot of Potential. Now, I want to present to you the alternative of that viewpoint where you have an all-in investor and an all-in uh, digital currency group that essentially has done a lot in the blockchain group. And then take a look at some of where the research is going. And this is on Investor Place. This is, of course, just one of the authors there. But basically he's saying, even though it's upcoming upgrades, basically Magneto is still not going to be enough to bring it to the table and put ETH Classic on the map. Now, granted, going to that $900 to $1,000 estimate, which is what people think ETH Classic can do based on the 5% market cap valuation of uh, Bitcoin to a, going to about 125 k that would be pretty amazing. But if you look at some of the other projects, and this is where it gets a little bit muddy, and, and I think for you as an investor, um, that's the thing you have to watch for, and, and you have to really kind of do your own research. Obviously, this is not investment opinion. We break these things down for you every, uh, hopefully every episode that we give you some price predictions and give you some angles on this, but these are market movers. Just as a reminder, it's not investment advice. So back to the point here. This whole thing is applying to a lot of DeFi projects that could blow up on the, on the run-up for Bitcoin in this bear market of 2021, the ending of the bear market 2021, we're going to see some altcoin movement. And I think ETH Classic is going to be right there in the thick of things in terms of where it's going, in terms of potential price, price points. The advantage that you have to kind of position yourself in is where do you want to be in the altcoin ecosphere? If you look back to this article, it may have some decentralized finance capabilities, but not enough to make it a better contender than Cardano, that's ADA, of course, Polygon, and of course, Solana. So, which are three coins and projects that I own and I'm very bullish on, and I like what they're doing, and there are a lot of things that are happening in all three of those projects. Uh, Cardano, a little bit slow on their rollout of Alonzo, and uh, you kind of see where Solana is in terms of their project, partnerships. They are further along. ETH Classic with Magneto, I think that will be the key of them being able to kind of catch up to the race. Now, could they be one of those DeFi uh, altcoins that could be in that conversation of best altcoin to own during the bull run? This could be an argument that a lot of people are looking at and kind of where it's going. But back to here, here's what he's saying. Um, Basically, it says it may the Magneto may help get them, you know, in terms of maintaining its compatibility with Ether, but it's hardly going to move the needle. Is basically what he's saying. He's mentioned this before around uh, ETH Classics, uh, you know, their capabilities, but it doesn't have enough to make the formidable competitor to basically Cardano, Polygon, and all those. That, that's kind of the scenario. There is a path though here, where he's projecting is that. 
uh, where and if it does surge, it's going to be across the board, much like what I just mentioned. The serious rebound we'll probably see with um, Bitcoin, I believe, is going to take ETH Classic along for the ride, just like Ethereum, Cardano, Polygon, and so on, Solana. And, and I think that's the scenario that we're going to have to watch. And also Ethereum's uh, rebound potential. Because remember, Ethereum was trading close to a little over $4,000 back in mid-May. That is a good example of where that could potentially, because if you're an Ethereum holder right now, maybe you've recently purchased, that's a double 2x your money. So that's where I think we're going with this. And the potential for this is that, it, you know, it's pretty amazing. I want to jump to the final component here, and that is some sentiment data on ETH Classic. And this is uh, just going over to trading view real quick. We pulled this sentiment. This is from May 24th. So back when we saw this massive rise, of course, the fall off that we, of course, all experienced, and then this little bit of bump. And then here was an opportunity to really get a big registration on sentiment all the way into June. So this amplification and the sentiment has been holding at 69.81, uh, amplification still fairly high, 58.33. Anything over 50 on both sentiment and in amplification is good. These are good, uh, good scores. So you look at the sideways action here of where it's going, and the amplification is kind of this uh, zone right here you see in the purple that essentially is looking at what sentiment uh, is looking like in general and how people are talking and or transacting around ETH Classic. And it's, it's somewhat positive and has a little bit of a curve upward from where it's currently trading. And as I said, it's currently trading right now as we speak at around $46, $47. This has a potential in the near future uh, between now and mid-August to probably take its move up to around 80 to 90 bucks. So we could see a 2X here with ETH Classic. There's a little bit of a bottom uh, concern that I have, and that is in this zone right here, uh, in terms of whether or not we continue to hold sentiment, which is what we're talking about right here. We are going to be looking at tracking another sentiment range from here to, depending on what happens right here over the next few days, we'll look at a sentiment scoring period over this period of time, and it's going to be basically from what will be June 29th to hopefully around July 15 or 16 when we pull this, because that'll be right before Magneto releases and we'll be able to kind of get an amplification estimate uh, because of Magneto. Are we getting a little bit of a swell here in terms of consumer sentiment, investor sentiment, and people like the project and also like where Magneto is going? I think that's gonna be the, thing, the key thing to watch. So is there's, there's two routes that are gonna happen here. One is that you're a believer in uh, ETC and Classic and you like the OG side of it. And I'd love to hear your comments. Put them down below. I wanna, I wanna see your feedback and I love that kind of input because it helps us understand kind of the direction that maybe you've got some research out there that could help us really kind of go in that direction. But the things you gotta wor worry about with ETC is, is the competitor landscape. And that's gonna be Cardano, Polygon, Solana, and how well Magneto can hold on in terms of its development cycle and also whether it does what it says it's gonna do in terms of smart contracts and just the whole allure of keeping up with Ethereum because that's the key with bringing in you know, Ethereum Classic and putting it in to the game and keeping it somewhat relevant. I think those are the thing, key things you're gonna to need to watch. So watch what the other projects are doing and make sure and stay tuned with on where Magneto is in terms of its release and also its updates. So that's gonna be the key thing to watch for sure. If you're listening in over on the podcast, make sure and give us some stars over there. If you're on Spotify, get a follow in. And of course, you're here on YouTube, the number one thing you can do is subscribe to the channel, hit some likes. And if you wanna reach out to me, I leave my DMs open for you. Just hit me up on uh, Twitter, at Paul Barron. That's the best way to reach me. Or if you haven't, you wanna hit us email, it's just producer at reverendnetworks.com. I'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.